The first time we were in Zermatt, we saw the giant constructions of the Matterhorn Glacier ride. Therefore, we decided to return after it was finished before we made our review for you. When we returned, we discovered that since then, they have built the first autonomous gondola in the world and have several other big projects planned to make this superb ski resort the best in the world. Keep watching if you want to learn about these new developments and gain essential knowledge on recommended ski runs, where to sleep in Zermatt and many more insider tips. Before deciding where to ski in the coming season, you'll want to watch this thorough review of Zermatt and the Matterhorn Ski Paradise. Switzerland is famous as the most beautiful country in the world. It is hard to get more Swiss than Zermatt. The views of the Matterhorn, the wooden chalets and being the first town to get rid of petrol engines make Zermatt one of a kind. Located on the northern side of the area where the Alps squeeze to the highest elevations between the African and European tectonic plates lies Zermatt, surrounded by 38 peaks over 4 kilometers. The second highest peak in the Alps, the Monte Rosa at 4,607 meters and the most iconic mountain in the world, the Matterhorn at 4,478 meters, stand tall in the middle of the ski area and the latter gives it its name, Matterhorn Ski Paradise. Zermatt shares this ski area with the towns of Valtonnage and Cervigna on the Italian side. The total length of the continuous ski runs in the Matterhorn Ski Paradise is 360 kilometers. 210 kilometers are part of the Swiss side and 150 kilometers are on the Italian side. The highest FIS ski race globally is in Zermatt and it's the only one to stretch over two countries. But this is far from being the only record Zermatt has to its name. It has the highest cable car station at 3,883 meters the highest ski lift at 3,899 meters and the highest 3S cable car globally, as well as the longest ski run in the world with a fantastic length of 25 kilometers. And finally, it is also the largest glacier ski area globally and the highest ski area in Europe. Once you arrive in Zermatt, you immediately feel the magic of this place. It's an extensive and vibrant ski village where you will only find a few special electric cars unique to Zermatt and their electric ski bus system. On the other side of the train station, you will see the terminal of the Gorbegrat train, an iconic train line that will take you to the highest open train station in Europe at the highest Gonnegrat peak at 3,089 meters. From the Bahnhof, the main street of Zermatt, Bahnhofstrasse, stretches half a kilometer south and is filled with shops, restaurants, bars and hotels. Several other beautiful streets are connected to it as well. After 350 meters, take a left after the round Ogier shop to enter Hinterdorstrasse, which crosses the old village 200 meters to the Vipsa River flowing in the middle of Zermatt. You can see all around Hinterdorfstrasse's wooden houses that date back to the 1500s. The other side of this ancient area is next to Harry's Bar. If you continue south on Bahnhofstrasse, you will pass the nightlife area and arrive at the church at the end of the street. Here you will also find the entrance to the Matterhorn Museum, which holds a substantial underground exhibition on the history of the Matterhorn and Zermatt. It's just 10 Swiss francs and is free for Swiss travel pass holders. Finally, if you turn left after the museum, you will pass through the mountaineering cemetery and arrive at the Kirschbrook, where you will find the best view of the Matterhorn in Midtown. Another lovely tour to explore is to go to the Sonniger Rothorn Funicular. Before entering the funicular, turn left and take the lift up. Then you can turn right and walk back to Kirschbrook with the best views of Zermatt and the Matterhorn in the background. The 360 kilometers of continuous runs are divided into 74 kilometers of blue runs, 227 kilometers of red runs, 20 kilometers of black runs, 
and 36 kilometers of yellow freeride trails. There are 148 slopes in total, served by 54 lifts. Matterhorn Ski Paradise is the highest ski area in Europe and the best summer ski option in the Northern Hemisphere. The highest point at the Ski Paradise is the highest point of all European ski resorts at 3,899 metres and the lowest is 1,620 metres at Zermatt Village. That's almost a 2,400 metre altitude difference. The whole natural theatre around Zermatt is like the Alps on steroids. The diversity of terrain here is unreal. Before we begin our review of the slopes, we have to say that it was difficult to narrow down the options because there are so many great runs with fantastic views. We will begin the review from left to right on the ski map or from north to south. The first area is Sunega Rohorn. Run 3 Red. An easy Red Valley run with the closest views of Zermatt and the Matterhorn in the background. Pay attention at the end of the run, there's a steep funnel. It's not one for beginners. Run 15 Red. A new long and wide slope, along with the first autonomous gondola in the world, the Kuma Gondola, opened in December 2020. The first part is steeper and the second turns south and curves to the tree line. You get the best panoramic views of Zermatt plus the Matterhorn from a totally new slope. Run 7 Blue West facing wide easy cruising with spectacular views of the Matterhorn. Run 7 and 6 are marked as slow slopes, where you have to control your speed for the safety of the beginners around you and yourself. However, this gives you a great opportunity to relax and enjoy the view. After the Sunega restaurant, you can turn right to Run 4 Red or left to our next choice. Run 6 Blue A south-facing slope combined of three runs, if you keep to the right, you will pass Ed La Hitta, one of the most recommended restaurants that serves local cuisine. If you take the left lane near Volley Beginner Area, you will pass by another recommended place, Paradise. If you continue on, you will reach the superb Cheese Vroni with its takeaway shack. Here you're meant to take it easy and observe the pictorial huts and fantastic views. Run 6 is also recommended as a warm-up run because it is the only run close to town that you can ski south from the top station of the funicular. But on the other hand, the snow can be slushy at noon in the late season. Run 19 Red A 4.5 km red run that begins at the Rothorn Peak at 3,103 meters with a unique view of Findel Glacier. It then turns south and curves its way to the glacier base. From there, it continues west to a lovely part for cruising while observing the magnificent mountain. On this run, you are at the most remote distance from the Matterhorn. At the end, run 19, also known as the Fluhaup run, passes through the tree line until the base station of the Hotelli cable car. The second area is the Gornegra area. Run 44 red. A long cruiser from the Hotali Peak to the Gornegrat main area. Generally, the central area of the Gornegrat, like runs 35 and 45, is excellent for curving or speed cruising, where you can find plenty of nice off-piste playgrounds. We'll share another excellent insider tip later, if you watch until the end. The third and most extensive area is the Matterhorn Glacier Paradise. Here you can find the longest ski run in the world, from the highest mountain station in Europe at 3,883 meters, down to Zermatt village at 1,620 meters. It's 15 kilometers long if you measure it straight down, but 25 kilometers of skiing. The runs on the way here are 85 red, 83 red, 81 red, 
73 blue, 66, 65 and 64 reds, there's a nice sequence here, 62 black which is a very easy black, and finally run 50 red from Furi to Zermatt village. In this area, you can actually ski on the north base of the Matterhorn and the Healy area. Run 69 and Run 52 are our recommendations. Here you can also find the Zermatt Snow Park. You'll need to take the Fergutsattel chairlift to get there. There is another snow park in Cervinia, close to the south base of the Matterhorn, or Cervinio to give it its Italian name. The most recommended run in Cervinia is Run 7, a carving paradise of 13 kilometers. It starts at Testa Grigia Peak at 3,480 meters and ends at Cervinia Village at 2,050 meters. Most of its upper part is part of the new Feast Downhill World Cup course. For total beginners, an excellent place to stay is around the Zunega Rothorn funicular. The Volley Beginners area is on the top station of the funicular. Even for non-beginners, starting your day in this funicular isn't such a bad idea because the only south-facing runs close to the town are in this area. Therefore, it could be a nice warm-up for the day, with great views of Zermatt and the Matterhorn. Another good place to stay is around Gornegrat Valley Station. If you stay here, you'll be first on the tracks of the Gornegrat area. This west-facing area is relatively sunny and an excellent place to warm up, especially the 37, 38 and 45 blue runs from Rottenbonden Station. If you stay around Gornegrat Valley Station, you're downtown and close to Bahnhofstrasse with all the shops, galleries and bars. And of course, close to the train station itself, which is a bonus for short stays. Another great area to stay at is next to the Matterhorn Express gondola. This gondola arrives at the Furi Lifts Hub and is the best option for advanced skiers who want to explore more of the Italian side and the Matterhorn Glacier. Additionally, Run 50 ends here, so if you want to finish your day at the Henu Stahl Apre Ski, which we will talk more about later, and ski back to town, this is the place to stay. The only downside is that you're a little far away from the centre and the nightlife. Staying in all the other areas, you'll probably need to take the electric green or red bus lines, which pass every 20 minutes. If you're staying along the Vipsa River, you'll always be close to a ski bus station. You'll find the best on-mountain Apre ski bars on the Run 50 from Furi to Zermatt. First, there's Blatten, a chill-out place with some tanning chairs and a nice view. However, we recommend that you continue on to the next bar on the trail, one of the best Apre ski bars in Switzerland, the Henustal. This is as close as you get to the Mosaviet vibes in Switzerland. Back in town, you can stop in Paparella pub next to Kirschbrook, the first bus stop of the green bus. Another place to look out for is Harry's Bar, at the second bus stop. Zermatt's nightlife centre is around the Hotel Post on Bahnhofstrasse. Next to the hotel, you will find Hexen Pub, which despite being decorated with many witch dolls, still has a friendly vibe. Inside Hotel Post, we recommend Pink Bar if you're into live gigs. The Brown Cow and the Broken Bar Club are for late night and mainstream music lovers. In front of Hotel Post, there's a bar and club called Mamacita. On the ground floor, you can find a nice bar with live gigs, and underground is the club. On Thursdays, Fridays and Saturdays, they have cool techno parties for the clubbers among you.
As mentioned before, the building of the Matterhorn Glacier Ride 3S gondola opened up a connection between the Glacier Paradise and Trockner Steg. The building of the 3S gondola also improved the reliability of the connection to Cervinia in windy weather. In 2023, another 3S gondola will connect Testa Grigia Peak and the Glacier Paradise. This will significantly improve the resort's summer ski area and even provide a connection between Cermat and Cervinia for pedestrians. There are other projects planned for the next few years too. A cable car from Hortali Peak to Stockner Peak, an increase in the number of freeride trails, and a four-seater high-speed detachable chairlift from Breitbonden to Rosenritz Peak. There are also plans to create new valley runs. Zermatt Bergbahnen is the lift company with the most outstanding projects and developments right now. It seems that they can build new ski lifts faster than we can create our reviews. As said earlier, the highest FIS ski race globally is in Zermatt and is the only one over two countries. The Gran Becca starts at 3,700 meters and finishes in Cervinia at Laghi Cimibianche at 2,863 meters. Gran Becca is the locals' nickname in Valtournanche and Cervinia for the Matterhorn. For those unfamiliar with FIS, the speed events are downhill and Super G. Super G means super giant slalom. In 2023, after the opening of the new 3S gondola connecting Testa Grigia Peak to Klein Matterhorn, the race will begin 100 meters higher at 3,800 meters. Zermatt is unique because there are no cars here. The best way to get here is by train and you can do so directly from Zurich and Geneva airports. The round trip tickets from Zurich airport are around 60 euros. There is a train every hour and the ride is approximately three and a half hours long. There is a train from Geneva every 40 minutes and it's about 50 euros and the ride is around three hours and 15 minutes. If you come by car, you will have to leave it at Tash indoor parking for 16 Swiss francs per day. A round trip train ticket is 16 francs and 40 cents and there is a train every 15 minutes. The ride is quick too, it takes less than 15 minutes. At the exit from the Bahnhof, you will see the electric cars of the hotel you booked waiting for you. If you booked a hotel without this service, just take an electric taxi if your hotel is not within walking distance. And now for our pros and cons. Zermatt is a big, diverse and stunning ski area. The slopes are well groomed. It's a snowshore resort. There's a good infrastructure, particularly on the Swiss side. Kids under nine years old get free ski passes. The pedestrian village is magical. There's a relatively good après ski and nightlife for a Swiss resort. It's a vibrant town. And there are plenty of free rider options. However, it's relatively expensive and hard to get to. There are very few ski in, ski out accommodations on offer. And there are no beginner valley runs to town. To quantify our review, here are our ratings for Zermatt out of 10. For beginners, 7. Intermediates, 10. For those more advanced, 9. Snowboarders, it's a 9. Freestylers, 9 again. Free riders, a slightly better 9.5. Apres ski, 8.5. Nightlife, 7.5. Resort charm, another perfect 10. And in terms of value for money, it's an 8.5. Before we give you our final score and our excellent insider tips, if you wish to compare Zermatt to other ski resorts, please visit our website www.skiresortsvideo.com forward slash comparison. It's linked below. Use our comparison engine for a side-by-side -side overview of 15 essential criteria for up to six ski resorts simultaneously and learn more about the best ski resorts. Plug over back to Zermatt's final score. So the total score from ski resorts video for Zermatt is 9.2.
We've been promising them all video, so it's time for our insider tips. On Gornagrat, after you pass the Igloo village, you'll find a hidden natural half pipe between Igloo Run, Run 45 and Run 37. Before you book accommodation, keep in mind that there are no ski lockers in the Zermatt Furi gondola and cable car town station. Take an extra layer of clothing. The best is another soft shell in your backpack when you head to the slopes. Unfortunately, the gigantic height differential also means a significant temperature difference. If you're looking for a cheaper resort in the Matterhorn Paradise, we highly recommend our thorough review on Cervinia, linked in the upper left corner of the screen. If you want to explore another beautiful and brilliant late season ski area, check out our teen review in the bottom left corner. If you liked this video and want to stay informed on our following reviews on ski resorts, give us a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button, it's much appreciated. Don't forget to hit the chime on the right. Finally, if you have any extra info on Zermatt or want us to review another ski resort, please let us know in the comments section below.